Rahim, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. That was an interesting topic that we were uh, Oh, go ahead. Uh. No, no, you go ahead. Yes, no, start up, you start it. No, go ahead. Started, yeah. He wanted to talk about something he posted on social media regarding a kind of rift developing in North America. Already kind of developed. Yeah? yeah? Okay, take it, take it. Sorry, now go ahead. So the, the, the conversation is about ADOS, about yeah. African descendants or American descendants yeah. of slavery. Uh, yeah. And from the clip that he was producing, um, there's, I'm there's, hold around here. I'm gonna run and get my dad for that. Nah, it's a joke, T. <laughs> Go on, you don't see it, it's our channel. You know it's our we, channel. We, you know we want first class treatment. Yeah, right yeah, yeah, yeah. Come saying like big mics and that. Yo, hey. Cannons and the yeah, man. You know, yeah, mixes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're coming with it, man. <laughs> nah, so. Mm, yeah. the, com the conversation was off the back of the video that you posted. Yeah, yeah. Regarding like a sort of contempt. I would say, and I would yeah. like a, a disdain mm. from coming from um, children of, or of slaves in America, mm. um, predominantly towards African immigrants mm. whose ancestors didn't go through slavery in the Americas. Yeah, yeah. Um, the issue was kind of like so it was based on some films and some. No, basically it was. Um, these, you know, it was, it was that film Harriet. Um, yeah. Um, from Harriet. Yeah. yeah. The film Harriet, and it was the dude. A get out as well, and um, I just um, posted it up and commented on it. And so what I noticed, the films? no, what it was the girl, um, the girl starring the film is from a Nigerian descent, um, grew up in the UK, and basically it kicked off a sort of, sort of yeah. interesting conversation. I posted it up, I did a couple of the brothers, and to me, it kind of sparked off a um, an, an interesting conversation that I wanted to have. Like, is this really a problem? Starting to develop. This is 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 the the tuxedo. Is the division? Is it valid? Is it valid for African descendants or American? Sorry, American descendants of slavery to look at other uh, African immigrants whose ancestors haven't gone through slavery but probably gone through the colonial process. Is it fair for them to say you deal with your issues, we'll deal with ours, and we have nothing to do with each other? How do you feel? about that? What would you say to that? My brother Jamil, is it Jamil? Jamil, yeah. Brother Jamil, yeah. 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 Um, that, that's a very good question. That, that's a very good question. Um, I think at, at the base of it, I think the, the issue that we all face is exactly the same. You know, we all need some uplifting. So what it is, you going through slavery and um, the people that are coming over having gone through it, they still have, like you had said, have gone through some colonial, um, some, process. Some, some colonial pro process which affect them on a, on a mental level yeah. as mm. it is in, in the United States that affect them on a mental level. So mm. what, what, what they all need is, is I think that this, the same medicine will help both parties in that, you know, if you need uplifting, they need, j they need just as much uplifting. Yes, the struggle hasn't been the same. Yeah. You both have, have not, you know, the, the, the struggle not being the same does not, does not mean that the, 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 um, the, the, the solution has to be different. Has to be different, yeah. So that, I think that's Do you that 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 I Well, yeah, well, sort of, um, yeah. Because um, we need a double side. Yeah, that's what it really is. That's what, <laughs> that's, that's, that's what it is. Because um, I think we're looking at it in, in a non biased way as, as, um, as African diasporas. Because yeah. what I looked at it, part of the video, part of the clip showed us a majority. Way, actually. Yeah, that's what I think. Someone might say our. Uh, because, again, if you look at it, if you look at it from, a, from an angle of you guys are benefiting off of the backs of us, yeah. then us saying no is in bias in our favour. If, yeah. if we're actually gaining something yeah. by riding on the coattails yeah. of ADOS. Yeah. Um, just, but, just, yeah. But I don't really think a lot of African immigrants really did. Do you get where I'm coming from? Because yeah. with the success rate of a lot of West African brothers and sisters, like I highlighted um, with the Somali community, okay, we're not really up there, but we're getting there, you know, it's kind of all my immigrants, to be honest, so, so, yeah. I feel like it's not really our fault to be, um, now to create this rift, so I, that's what 
That's my personal. That's my personal drift. Would, would you would you say that Somalis have benefited yeah. um, due to? Um, well, what I know is what one, one of the have, have not in America. No, and I would say like okay, part of the struggle. Okay, I understand the struggle of the 400 years slavery. Yeah. It was atrocious. Um, the Jim Crow, all that what happened with the civil rights movements. But we did come in the 60s. Some of us did come in the 90s. Not even that far. And, and I'm just saying, well, look, we're here to eat as well. So uh, yeah. that's my type of angles where yeah. we shouldn't really just because we didn't go through a certain struggle doesn't mean we're we're less African or. And I support their, oh, you know, Ados. I actually, you know what, I do recommend what they do stand for and that is getting reparation that is um and i respect that side i don't think no african brother and sister wants that's the thing that's the, that's that's the bit where i think it's like but, but it seems as though there's this there's this pitch as though yeah. um african or america so i keep saying african american descendants of slavery yeah. are somehow being hindered yeah. by uh, immigrants from the african diaspora yeah. that's the thing that pisses me off and i'll be yeah. real about it it just it just it doesn't make any sense to me um, where, like, like in the video that you presented, the Nigerian brother who's a, who's an immigrant who's 50 years old, yeah. like, has has a fully integrated American accent, yeah. has lived there, his culture's there. Yes, he has a he has an external culture, goes back to Nigeria. Yeah, yeah? but he would have struggled, yeah. yeah, in the same way that any Ados person would have struggled, mm. yeah, in order to secure a, a, a place in, in a good college or a good university. He would have. Bought he would have he would have struggled second fold just because of his name mm -hmm. just because of the, the foreign the foreign um, aspect of his name which many people of uh, from the ADOS uh, background don't have they they mo a lot of them have Can like you explain what ADOS was for the camera so um, explain uh, ADOS so, yeah. so ADOS was the American descendants of slavery yeah right so yeah. it would have been the children yeah. who have like you said 400 years of chattel slavery come out at the end of Jim Crow and all the other brain okay. jobs that the, that the American uh, government has done to them in the name of, of, of white supremacy or what have you. Um, so that's not that's not the angle where we disagree. In fact, we often mm. vie for it, which is why for me, I often feel insulted mm. when I hear it. Mm. You know, like I I will acknowledge the, the Ashanti role, yeah, in slavery was a significant one, mm. right? Mm. It was, and I can see to this day, I think it was wrong. Yeah, so no matter what. Excuse Even like a couple of weeks ago, that. we talked about the Somali thing. I put my hands up, and then as we did that movie about a week ago, two weeks ago, that video, as black Muslims, we do say, yo, some of the things were her choices. It was messed up. And we don't cover that up. We, you know, we don't sugarcoat none of that. You know how we do. Um, selling your countryman for, for arms mm. and, and food and sugar and mm. all sorts of stupidness. But then again, on that hand, what Ghana's doing, the year of return. Yeah. Well, like, I made uh, one billion boosting the economy to open up their doors for their brothers and sisters. That's so, for me, that's the first yeah. step of break. break um, reconciliation. Yeah. But, but as well, well, can I take yeah. us back a little bit? Uh, uh, do, I have, do I have to keep holding this? Uh, yeah. Let me take us back a little bit. I think... It's, all right, it's fine. Let me take us back a little bit. I think that we blacks who were brought up in this country actually should be able to speak on this subject with some authority. Because what we've had here from a long time were Caribbeans, yeah. People who are like Ados and Africans coming together for ever since the Windrush time, which is from about 1960 onwards, let's put it that way. Uh, what you find, like his brother and I, would be from the Ados community, and you all would be from the, the African direct diaspora community. We are the diaspora via 400 years. Now, what I felt when I would hear my father, who worked with Africans, speak with my father is from Trinidad and we grew up in Trinidad and what I learned about this country from my dad is what he would explain to me and he had a high regard for his African colleagues and I realized the reason why and it also explains the reasons for the kind of rift that did exist here between Africans and African Caribbeans and I think it's because when my father came here he didn't come as a worker. He came 
as opposed to most Caribbeans, he came as a student. He interacted with students who were working. A lot of the Africans were students who would work, but they were first and foremost students. And even if they weren't students, they'd tell you they were students. <laughs> because they plan to get somewhere in life. Yeah. You know, fake it till you make it, kind of thing. So, you know the old joke, Felix Dexter's comedy about the I am an accountant. Felix Dexter the comedy, the comedian. You gotta watch Felix. He, he passed, he died. A guy from Caribbean who does skits on different person, black persona in the types. In the, and he's explaining how the African would present himself as a professional, even if he was exaggerating. The fact is, he's come from a culture where this is expected of him. So what it seems to be in the beginning in this country, the difference between the ADOS, let me call them what they're African Caribbeans, and the Africans was one as much of class as of culture. There was a difference in class. Most of the Caribbeans who came were workers and they were low le low level. What is the word they're calling them? Pretty pet this pretty petal. She was calling them a name recently. Low skilled? Uh, well, unskilled, unskilled, work. Work. unskilled workers. Unskilled all workers. Or even though we ended up running London Transport. <laughs> it would not have functioned with a cat. And the nursing industry, even though they call us BBC. You know what BB you know what BBC is? Black uh, British bottom cleaners. <laughs> because we were the ones. Our women did the, the care industry, yeah. just like now you got Filipinos, it was Africans and African Caribbeans. But basically, I think perhaps you made the point earlier when you were off message, which is that immigrants, whether they be African or not, they come with a plan. The people of the home country haven't, will not strategize as efficiently as the people who come. When people come, they say, I have a six year plan a 10-year plan when I get home these are the things I need to be doing so I think perhaps when you look at the African-American community and you look at the people who came in North America we fall somewhere between the ADOS talking about Jamaicans and Trinidadians and Barbadians and the like fall between the ADOS and the Africans who are coming because similarly when you think of Jamaican in this country you don't think of people who are absolutely progressive but in America they are. In New York, man, they, they got businesses. They educated. And I have heard this because my family live in New York. They live in Queens, some of them up in the Bronx. Right? And let me tell you what I hear. They say African Americans, there's a bit of an animus between us. African Americans think we are more progressive or we have been allowed to leapfrog over them. Now this is coming from African Caribbeans, not even Africans. African Caribbeans are saying whether be Guyanese, Barbadians, Jamaicans, or Trinidadian, they are saying that they hear from certain African Americans that they have been allowed. So I ask the question, I know the way you all worked when you came here, how are you being allowed to leapfrog over them? But there is this sense, and I heard it from Jesse Jackson, perhaps you all don't go back as far as 2009, just before the election when Obama won, it was 2009, and Jesse was expressing misgivings like, Obama hasn't earned the right to call himself an African-American. Therefore, yes, what he was saying, like, I march with Dr. King. We paid our dues. This guy was middle class. He went to a middle class school in Hawaii and another middle class school in Indonesia. And he came back, he got into his politics in Chicago, and all of a sudden he got pushed right. He's allowed to leapfrog over the African-American community. Now, there is that sense that the African-Americans are feeling passed over. Not only by Koreans, the obvious, the Koreans and other people, uh, yeah, but now you have the, their own blood, their own people, the African-Caribbeans and the African-Americans are doing it to them too. Now, I think with the Caribbeans, the, the tension is less because we speak the same language. We have different accents. But basically, we speak the same language. And a lot of our customs are not dissimilar. Our food might be different, but basically, the customs are kind of there. And I want to, still, there is it. There is that. So we who were brought up in this country, um, I, as I said,
heard you all before was taken home as a child. My parents went home when I was four and I went with them. So I only heard things. I only heard things. And what I heard is that in the early days, in the 60s and 70s, young African children were teased at school because of the accent by Caribbean children. So that there was a pressure on everybody to speak like a Jamaican. There was that pressure because that was a dominant group. Even growing up at school, so I'm, I was born in 1990, even growing up at school, there was um, a sort of embarrassment mm. of, not even, not embarrassment, but there wasn't the pride in being African as there was, you know, you get, now I'm not an African, and you'd have people of African that come from the, the continent saying they're Jamaican, or they're, one of their parents is half Jamaican, or, or acquiescing, we because they felt the pressure. Like a yeah. form, so I understand that we could, um, we're, um, we're like, on hindsight, we've been Is that why you all were claiming PDD? <laughs> <laughs> it's PDD claiming us. Come on, I'm claiming us. The bar looks so bad, <laughs> man. <laughs> so, go on. Like I was saying, um, you see, I can't understand where um, a lot of people used to, from a lot of West Africans, uh, I've experienced that, obviously, growing up in the I grew up or highly dominant African community. Caribbean culture is still the most prevalent here. Mm. That was amongst, numbers. That was amongst, a numbers mm, game back then. Mm. Because even the even Trinidadians, you catch them out. So, I can hear it. Why are you trying to speak like a Jamaican? You know, why, do you remember mm. Grenadians, mm. Barbados? You know, we used to laugh, everybody laugh at the Barbados accents. We, we are from the accents. You're, you're from you're from Branch Town, down there. Yeah, <laughs> Barbados brothers, it's all good. But yeah. well, we love your cocoa like and your flying fish. Stronger. Yeah, we love your we love your cocoa and your flying fish. <laughs> now, so everybody would try. Even the other Caribbeans would try to affect a Jamaican accent. My family, the other side, used to do it. So I understand that. In America, the demographics are different. Every group, I think the difference in America is, you know, if you wanted to open a business and you wanted a ready-made consumer base, you were African and blacks. African. In this country, it was a little more difficult to break into business because your customer base was that much small. We, and I think for the, the African-American consumer, I'm I don't know, how you doing, brother, you're right? For the African-American consumer, he felt, in a way, like we always buying from all the foreigner shops. We always eating from foreigners, we always buying from foreigners. When are we going to do our own thing? Of course, you you have your rascal chicken and waffles. You have American business, African-American businesses. But by and large, a lot of the businesses are Caribbeans and Africans. You go to Manhattan, Mali, Guinea, Guinea Conakry, Mali, and Senegal restaurants in Manhattan. You see? So I understand, man. Remember, if you go up to Harlem, that bit, it's almost concentrated. So there was this feeling where Harlem used to belong to us. Now, it's gentrified, like Harlem's did where I live. You know, I, I, I'm a minority. I'm not a minority. I'm a, you know what I'm saying? So, they're saying these people are moving it, and in a sense, we feel a little hurt because these people are taking advantage of the common color we share. That's what they say. They're taking advantage of the fact that we're all black. Now, my view how, how would you respond to that? Would you say? that Africans are taking advantage of the color and that the avenues that have been opened up by African Americans that they just they're just flooding that space to the exclusion of Africa. Would you, would you say that's valid? I would not say they're taking advantage. I'll say they're benefiting. Yeah. Do they, they benefit? Yes. Yeah. Um, but sorry, I would say they're taking advantage. Uncle, does that fall in line where you're talking about um, where when someone comes somewhere and arrives somewhere, they've got a plan. <laughs> where, and especially in a lot of West African cultures, education, I have to give it to the West Coast, education's up there. And where a majority of doctors and nurses that I found in the US, majority of them come from the West African community. So is that, does that play a factor in it? Because you've come there for a plan to make money, yeah, I to build so. something, I mean, I and you've always got you're some, you've got, you've got a and, education. and you've got a different identity yeah. as well. Remember, so we, a Ghanaian family will say, sit down and even if you buy candlelight, 
Straight. You think you do your homework, right? Straight. Get it done. Mm-hmm. I grew up like that until the my village said that the life would just go. The electricity would just go. And we got we had to fill buckets of water at the stand with the pipe. Yeah. And we didn't have pipe bowl water in the house. Let me tell you this. But no matter what, there ain't no electricity. Put a candle and study. Now a lot of Africans have that too. Now check it out. African Americans may not. I'm not I'm trying to see, I don't know. I've never been to Mississippi. Um, I always had a plan to go deep south. Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Atlanta, down. I've been to Atlanta, but not down deep. You know, to see the real culture of the African American, to see the extent to which they might still be affected by a kind of fear of being ambitious. Something like that. That's why a lot of them ran north. You see, when you check it out, a lot of Caribbeans left during the Windrush period to come here. What we fail to recognize is there was a migration in America too. It just took place over land. During the Great Depression, many African Americans living in those same states, Alabama, uh, um, Georgia, Louisiana, Tennessee, uh, um, Mississippi, sorry, moved north. Whole families. Some of them like, you know, like the way they did the Caribbean, like some left first, set themselves up, and then others came. Even Elijah Muhammad, he's from down Georgia. When Elijah Muhammad was growing up as a boy, Elijah Muhammad saw, like his mother sent him to the shop, Elijah Muhammad saw people lynched hanging from pop, from strange fruit, hanging from the poplar tree. Elijah Muhammad saw this as a boy going to the shop. We call him son downtown. You get out of town before it gets dark. You see? And a lot. So when we talk about our displacement, they had a displacement it just because it was overland. They go to New Michigan, they go to New York, even with Malcolm X's family, they moved up. Because it doesn't, we don't see it, the displacement. We see ours as Caribbeans. Because we have, you know, you've got to spend all that money to get back home, you know, when you're retired to build a house in Jamaica or wherever it is. But there, it happened in America too. So I believe that kind of displacement on top of the slavery and then they're encountering problems getting loans I do believe Caribbeans and my family have to, I have to get back to them on this I believe Caribbeans have an easier time taking out loans in American and African Americans when I was in America it's significantly easier this one I need to check on that so let me stick a pin on that when I was like going to do apply for certain jobs my family said straight straight with your English accent do not use a Caribbean accent, don't use an American accent. Speak with an English accent. Always. You're black, but they will, they will just sing. They'll just put your name on the top. They'll put your application on top. Straight up. They do that. So, there is something perhaps in favoring the outsider. There must be something to do with that. And like you said again, America is the kind of culture if you work your socks off, you will get to the top. And I believe the Africans had that over the African Americans, and I hope that's not too controversial a point that just made it. See, I, I do ha- have has difficulty with that point mm. that the African American is sat in America with some other priority other than working hard to get what's here. Now, my thing is, I could say to what I was saying to Khalid is, West African immigrants to the to the West were always economic migrants. My, as a child, my parents practically beat it into me. Education, education, yeah. education. You get that degree no matter whether you're just going to put me back in debt, whatever. And, and, and one of the things that my, my, my parents taught me as a, as a little kid is, you're going to have to work three times harder yeah, than the indigenous people of this country Thank you. to get yours. Thank and that's exactly the mentality that we set out with. Mm. Not to step on anybody's neck, yeah, not to put anyone down, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but to put ourselves ahead. Mm-hmm. At any means necessary, at any, any cost necessary. Mm-hmm. And it's resilience. We have got that in abundance as Africans. That's one but, thing. But to be faulted for that, like mm-hmm. the Sheikh said, bro. If it, like it's, but even thinking about it, it's a cryable situation. Mm-hmm. When I go back to when 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 I have, well, the last time I went to Ghana was 2004. Oh, cool. When I see little kids, like the Sheikh said, in darkness, yeah. candle lit lights, yeah. homes that are not even finished, yeah. no roofs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When it rains, it all comes. Mm-hmm. To say when those people mm. manage to get a ticket, mm. manage to land the visa, mm. and
and then end up somewhere in, in, in the south of USA yeah. that they become elites. Yeah. Are you not even shy to even say that? Like, mm -hmm. These people are an elite class. Yes. Or they're yes, they may have came as students, mm. but is this them coming as students? Does that mean that they're better off financially back home, no. or that they necessarily have something, some empire back home to go back to, mm. or that they can run away from from the American problems mm. that that they wouldn't have been lynched at, at, at the same time? The white American man does not see, mm. yeah, yeah, distinction yeah. between yeah. Our, between me and Sheikh Dan Juma and his power here and Khalid. Yeah. They don't, they don't see that. Mm. Now I understand the brain work, mm. yeah, the soft, the the, 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 the warfare, the psych, the, um, the psychological warfare that they've done to the two groups is different, it's different. right? But like the brother said, that's not necessarily mean that the solution for both of those parties is not the same. And quite clearly, they lump us in the same batch anyway. So, I mean, the only thing that I would say ADOS has, right, is in terms of reparations. I, I personally don't believe it's a that I fully I, I, to I personally don't believe yeah, yeah. It's, they're ever gonna give them reparations or there's some viable metric by which they would quantify yeah. how to give anybody this back. But one of my arguments yesterday was mm. yeah when met with this hostility shape down German I don't know if, what your take will be on it. If ADOS's thing is to separate the, the, the um, African immigrants yeah, away from those immigrants who, who, who went through slavery because of the job that or the work that's been done to their forefathers right then would it not also follow then that ADOS should divide itself into two parties? The children of house Negroes and the children of field Negroes, right? And the children of the field Negroes would need to be compensated more than those of the house Negro because the house Negro never had it bad as a field Negro. Yeah. I mean, if we, if, we, if we gain that deep into I don't want to be mischievous. I know, but, but I'm trying to know how, how can we determine that that is a, That's my a, whole a, point. a pro, progeny of a field Negro as a Opposed to the that, offspring of a house nigga. Whoa. How, how can we tell? That's my whole point. Well, one of the. One Professor of the, Henry Louis Gates. How would you classify Professor Skip Gates? I have not seen his face. I wouldn't know. Oh, uh, okay. But I'm saying, oh, but right. generally speaking. I was being mischievous. I kind of like him. Because <laughs> 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 no, one, yeah, yeah. one of the things that annoyed me about this video that Khalid showed me mm. was that the woman mm. who was talking to the brother was significantly lighter than the brother. Right? And she could very well go. Yeah. Um, a Latina. Miss, la, yeah, yeah, she can. She can. She can. She can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. She can. She can. She can easily slide underneath the radar whilst yeah. that brother would get lynched, beaten, mm. battered, and bruised. Mm. And then she is effectively she's trying to tell him you are not black enough. Then it was put to him that there was a there was a white cameraman who's good as DNA and he's got he's got the the, the, the blood of, um, of, oh, yeah. of, of 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 slaves yeah. of, Af of African uh, descendants of slaves. And she was saying he's he's lived the experience. And he was saying he hasn't. He so has she was saying his color allows him to hide from from the um, the, the onslaught or the the, the oppression of the other white man but my point is, is it seemed to me like they're shifting of goalposts here the usul the, the, the origin of your argument is that African descendants of slave or American descendants of slavery that's by blood that's by blood right according to you it's not by colour but when it happens to be a man that's significantly lighter or appears white in appearance you take away his his, his ancestry I mean who's to say that he hasn't gone through any psychological um, mm. effects of slavery via his mm. parents and via DNA. Yeah, yeah. There, there's two. There's, I, I, I'm trying. Would you argue? Sorry, I'm just yeah, no, no. Would you argue that there is a concerted and determined policy in the film industry to select British black with, 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 with the accent? Yes, with the British accent. Or is it because they're from Africa? Or is it because they have the accent? Oh, oh, maybe accent Brit employed, maybe employed. British black actors are just better Wait, at the job. But, but that's but, just maybe. Well, let's put that out. Yeah, let's sorry, let's sorry. ask. They're gonna, they're gonna wait, go so no, 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 let's ask this. <laughs> so this maybe. is something. Okay, so maybe what, what, someone's better are, than you are, had a job. Wait, are we asking the question, are they choosing yeah. the 
the the, uh, the the British African actors because of their accents, because of their English accent, mm. because they're not playing these roles. They're actually taking on African American accents when they play them. That's mm. the thing. So, do you not find it a kind of legitimate complaint? A little bit, just a bit. Because they've highlighted a couple of British yes, actors okay, now. Wait. It's like one, two. Three, do you know what? Four. Maybe I'm maybe I'm an idealist, but mm. I see I see these people, bro. Daniel Kaluuya is an excellent mm. actor. Mm -hmm. yeah. I see no his doubt. merit. No yeah. doubt. No one can tell me he played a bad role in the, but Samuel Jackson. I didn't know he was an African African until somebody he said it. I mean, he was a Ghanaian until somebody told me. I thought he was African yeah. American yeah. until he started speaking. Yeah. Bro, Peckham. Yeah. I mean, that's down the road from me. And the sister was Cynthia um, Revo. Cynthia Revo. Bro, I went to school with her. Mm. She's, so, she's from South London, bro. From, from, from the hood. Yeah, she's from the hood. She's from the hood. She worked her way, bro. She went and done Broadway and all of that. She's been grinding and grafting. Mm. She didn't get anything handed to her on the plate. And that's my issue. Um, Where it's like, you've had she, everything handed to you. At least I think she nailed the role as well. When I watched the whole film, Harry, I think she nailed it. To be honest, I haven't watched the film because there are some, some aspects of the film. Yeah. Hollywood always does it. Yeah, they always they always send subliminals about black people. The, 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 the criminal ends up being a black man. Um, and and it's just this. Black I've seen it. Oh, I'm not. I've seen it in a couple of Somali films like Captain Hall. 